Okay, so HIV status and coming out among African American gay and bisexual men. Brian D. Zimboni, Beatrice Bean E. Robinson, and Walter O. Bockington. From the University of Minnesota, Minneapolis, Minnesota, um, U.S. It is possible that disclosing one's HIV status can further a person's coming out process as a gay or bisexual man and can have other mental health benefits. Using samples of gay identified and bisexually identified African American men, this study examined the relationship between HIV status and several variables, use of mental health services, levels of internalized homonegativity, levels of stigma associated with same-sex activity, and disclosure about same-sex activity to community and family. Compared to individuals without HIV, the African-American HIV-positive men who had sex with men in this study reported using more mental health services, having lower levels of internalized homonegativity, and experiencing lower levels of stigma associated with same-sex activity. Duration of HIV positive status was positively associated with disclosure about same-sex activity. This pattern of results was more pronounced for gay identified African American men than those who identified as bisexual. These findings highlight low dis these findings highlight how disclosing one's HIV status can be associated with the coming out process. But minority stress associated with a bisexual identity among African American men who have, ha who have sex with men may minimize these potential benefits. Um, keywords, HIV, disclosure, coming out, bisexual, gay, African-American, black. Introduction. Becoming infected with HIV has often been viewed as a catastrophic life event because it is a virus without a cure that can lead to death. For Currently, HIV people are living longer and the outlook on the virus has changed over time. With HIV infection now seen as a chronic but manageable condition, however, similar to those with other sexually transmitted infections, those who are HIV positive still report experiencing stigma. This stigma is related to commonly held beliefs that persons who are infected with HIV are promiscuous, dirty, contagious, or irresponsible. Being HIV positive has also been associated with being gay because of the assumption that HIV AIDS is a gay man's disease. Gay and bisexual men may avoid disclosing their HIV status because they do not wish to reveal that they have had sexual contact with other men. The need for health care for persons with HIV, the increased wait, the need for health care for persons with HIV, the increased availability of services for HIV positive persons, and the fact that friends, family, and health care providers may give greater scrutiny to that person's sexual behaviors are factors that may increase the chance that HIV-positive African-American men who have, who have sex with men, MSM, reveal their sexual behaviors to others. Men diagnosed with HIV who are not openly gay or bisexual may find that the process of diagnosis and treatment for the disease may involuntarily facilitate or force their coming out process. These factors raise the question examined in the current study, is being HIV-positive associated with being more open about one's gay or bisexual identity, disclosing HIV status. Paxton, 2002, examined the effect of, of publicly disclosing one's HIV positive status by interviewing 75 sexual health educators from Africa, Australia, and the Asia Pacific area who discussed HIV and their HIV positive status in small group settings. These men and women reported that keeping their HIV-positive status secret was psychologically stressful and decided to disclose their status. Although disclosure was also stressful, they had a desire to educate others and challenge the stigma associated with being positive. Most of these, most of these study participants needed time to process their HIV diagnosis and disclose their status after having the virus an average of 2.6 years. Many cited disclosure as an emotionally cathartic event that helped release the stress of having a double life. Paxton concluded that disclosing one's HIV status was ultimately beneficial to one's overall well and health, well-being and health. Other research has shown that disclosing one's HIV positive status had numerous health and mental health benefits. Disclosure may decrease the depression and psychological 
isolation associated with the secrecy of being HIV positive. I like this song. What is it called? I like this song. What is it called? It's like so good. Okay, I'll just look it up now. Um, okay, I'm going to continue. Weiner, Battles, and Heilman, or Heilman reported that increased social support and praise from others can result from publicly dislocating or disclosing one's HIV positive status. In controlled clinical studies, Penn and Baker, Kai Colt, Glazer, and Glazer demonstrated that immune functioning was strengthened when long held secrets of traumatic experiences were expressed, disclosing sexual orientation. Many SMSM struggle with the stigma associated with male to male sexual activity activity and often keep this part of their sexual life a secret. The stigma is particularly acute in the African American community because of the because of the heterosexism among African Americans and racism among the largely white gay community. Despite the fact that negative reactions from family and friends can occur as a result of coming out, disclosure of one's sexual identity may be beneficial to a person's overall psychological well being and has been associated with improved relationships among family members. Contact with marginalized or stigmatized individuals may be the best way to reduce or eliminate stigma. But this requires that individuals take the risk of disclosing their sexual orientation. The current study hypothesis. Because a disclosure of one's HIV positive status can have health benefits, it is possible that the that being diagnosed with HIV can further a person's sexual identity development for MSM. Despite its serious nature and the fact that it is a life-challenging event, the HIV-positive diagnosis could prompt MSM toward disclosure of their status and sexual orientation. This open disclosure has the potential of enlisting helpful social support from other gay-identified or HIV-positive MSM, because bisexual individuals can experience stressors that differ from those of gay men. The following hypothesis was tested sep separately for the group of gay identified and the group of bisexually identified study participants. Hypothesis 1, HIV positive gay identified men will report higher use of mental health services, lower levels of internalized homo negativity, and stigma associated with same-sex activity and higher levels of disclosure about same-sex activity than gay-identified HIV-negative men. Hypothesis 2. HIV-positive men, or HIV-positive, bisexually identified men will report higher use of mental health services, lower levels of internalized homonegativity, and stigma associated with same-sex activity, and higher levels of disclosure about same-sex activity than bisexually identified HIV negative men. Method. We analyzed a subsample of data from a large cross sectional survey of 574 African American MSM, AA MSM, in two large metropolitan areas. Do you remember what MSM stands for? Okay, I forgot to. <laughs> We analyzed a subsample of data from a large cross-sectional survey of 574 African-American MSM in two large metropolitan areas, Boston and Minneapolis, St. Paul. The purpose of the current larger study was to adapt and evaluate an evidence-based intervention in a new population, HIV-positive African-American MSM. The study was funded... The study was funded as a cooperative agreement by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. The study protocol was reviewed and approved by the Social and Behavioral Sciences IRB, University of Minnesota, Fenway Community Health IRB, um, participants slash sample. We selected for analysis participants who self-identified as gay. And or the people in the study was 258 or bisexual, 203. In response to a question asking them if they considered themselves to be straight, gay, or bisexual, persons identifying as straight were excluded from analysis because of inadequate statistical power for analysis. Participants self-reported their HIV status 
Additional self-reported inclusion criteria included being an African-American male, 18 years of age or older, a resident of or regular visitor to the greater Boston metropolitan area, or a resident of the seven-county Minneapolis St. Paul metropolitan area. Having had sex with a man in the past year, Boston, or past three years, Minneapolis, St. Paul, and engaging in unprotected anal or vaginal intercourse within the past year. At both sites, a variety of non-probability sampling methods were used for recruiting respondents, respondents including facility-based sampling, time location sampling without randomization, print and internet ad advertisements, and the use of paid recruiters from the target community. Enrollment and survey administration was conducted over a seven-month period between summer 2006 and winter 2007. Survey administration. Study respondents were interviewed via audio computer assisted self-interview, ACASI, on laptop computers. The mean length of the interview was 26 minutes. ACASI interviews using headphones and computer privacy screens were used to decrease the impact of literacy challenges on data collection and increase confidentiality. This method also allowed respondents to complete the interviews in private and public locations. Interviews were set up and monitored by trained study staff, most of whom were members of the target population. The majority of the interviews were conducted at the research study sites, whereas the remaining interviews occurred in a variety of other convenient venues, including respondents' homes, public libraries, HIV agencies, clinics, or coffee shops. Respondents were paid $35 in Boston and $30 in Minneapolis, St. Paul for completing the interview. Instrument. The survey instrument was an adapted version of the Brief Street Intercept. The survey originally used in the evaluation of community promise. P-R-O-M-I-S-E. Um, questions were based on the trans theoretical model of behavior change, which theorizes that people move through a series of stages in the process of changing their behavior. Questions from the original interview were adapted for capital A-A-M-S-M, -S oh, African-American MSM. Mediating and confounding variables were added to the added survey and included use of mental health services, internalized homonegativity, MSM, and HIV-related stigma and disclosure of MSM attractions and behaviors. Variables relevant to HIV-positive status were collected from the HIV-positive respondents, and HIV-negative respondents were asked questions regarding their zero-status testing behavior. Variables, mental health services, this four-item scale was developed for the current study. Items asked respondents to answer yes or no to the following questions. Whether someone referred them to see a mental health care provider, whether they took medication for mental health problems, and whether they received chemical dependency treatment or attended a self-help group. Higher scores indicated increased use of mental health services. Internalized homonegativity. Adapted, <laughs> adapted for... From Roaster et al. 2010. Twelve items assessed the personal feelings and attitudes of respondents about their sexual behavior and attractions toward men. For example, I feel stress and conflict within myself over having sex with men. Items were summed after scoring on a seven point scale rating scale where high scores represented higher levels of internalized homonegativity. The scale demonstrated adequate internal consistency reliability on our sample. Um, alpha is 0.80. MSM stigma and homophobia from Diaz, Ayala, Bain, Hen, and Martin, 2001. The item, the 15 item scale, the 15 item scale questioned respondents about their experiences and homophobia as children and adults. As you were growing up, how often did you feel that your homosexuality hurt and embarrassed your family? As an adult, how often have you had to pretend that you are straight to be accepted? High scores re represented higher levels of reported homophobia. Four items asked respondents on a three-point scale to assess how difficult these experiences of homophobia were for them. 
High scores represented higher levels of difficulty coping with homophobia. The scale demonstrated a good internal consistency reliability on our sample. Um, alpha was 0.85 on 11 items and alpha was 0.86 on the last four items assessing difficulty of stigma. MSM disclosure. Adapted from Roser et al. 2004, four items assess disclosure to community and family about sexual attractions to and behaviors with men. For example, thinking of people in the family who you grew up in, how many know you are gay, bisexual, or a man who has sex with men. Items were summed up after scoring, or were summed after scoring on a five point Likert type rating scale. Higher scores denoted higher levels of disclosure about MSM attractions and behaviors to community and family. The four item scale demonstrated excellent internal consistency reliability, the alpha being 0.91. Data analysis. For all scales, mean scores were obtained by dividing the total score by the number of items in the scale, thus converting the total to original scale metric. Internal consistency reliability analysis were conducted using Kronbach's alpha. When initial internal consistency was low, items with low item total correlations and those shown by factor analysis using Varimax rotation and minimum factor loadings of 0.3 um, to not belong were removed. Let's see. When, it, when initial internal consistency Consistency was low items with low item total correlations and those shown by factor analysis to not belong were removed from the scales. To maximize available sample size, the individual scale mean was substituted when 10% or less of the items of a scale was missing and all items were applicable. In those cases in which the scale had 3 to 9 items, all items were applicable and only one item was missing. The individual scale mean was substituted. A conservative stance for statistical significance was taken for the current study. We define significance as p being less than 0.01 to test hypothesis 1. A series of univariate ANOVAs were conducted comparing gay-identified African-American MSM who reported being HIV positive, um, 142 men with those who reported being HIV negative or absence of HIV, which is N is 116, so 116 men, on four dependent variables, use of mental health services, internalized homonegativity, reported extra, report, the third one reported experiences of stigma and homophobia associated with same-sex activity and disclosure of MSM behavior, to test hypothesis 2, these same analysis were conducted comparing HIV positive bisexually identified African American MSM N is 65 with those who reported being HIV with those reported being the absence of HIV N is 138 results as table 1 indicates gay identified African American MSM who were HIV positive reported greater use of mental health. Um, frequency F1256 is 11.4, P is 0.001. Reported lower levels of internalized homonegativity. Um, F1253, oh my god, is 9.1, P is 0.003, and reported fewer experiences of stigma and homophobia than their counterparts who were HIV negative. F1255 is 7.9, the P was 0.005. In contrast, gay identified HIV positive and HIV negative African American MSM did not differ in their levels of disclosure about their MSM attractions and behaviors to community and family. F1255. 1, 255 is 3.9 and the P is 0 0.049. Bisexually identified African American MSM who are HIV positive reported greater use of mental health services. F1 1, 201 is 10.1 and the P was 0 0.002 than their HIV negative counterparts, but did not differ in their levels of internalized homonegativity.
f um, 1 comma 197 is 3.8 and the p was 0 0.054 experiences of stigma and homophobia okay journal of bisexuality page 80 table 1 Comparison of means between HIV positive and HIV negative men by sexual orientation. Mm. Use of mental health services. Internalized homophobia, homonegativity. Um, okay. <laughs> okay, so there's two charts gay identified and bisexually identified and use of mental health services, internalized homophobia, homonegativity, and MSM stigma or homophobia, homonegativity, and MSM disclosure. And in gay identified and bisexually identified, there's HIV positive and HIV negative. Um, and just numbers. Okay.